Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Live. Today we're going to be drawing a bonsai tree. This particular bonsai is a witch hazel tree. To start, you'll need some colored pencils and a regular pencil. The colors I'm using are greens, yellows, browns, and a red. If you don't have these colors at home, you can always try using markers, crayons, a highlighter, whatever you have on hand. You can also just use a regular pencil and just make it in grayscale. So the first thing you're gonna do is find your center line. And this looks to be about the center of the page. Then you're gonna break that in half to get your horizon line, which is about a quarter of the page. So I went ahead and drew my horizon line already. I used a regular number two pencil to create our sample but so you guys can see a little bit easier I'm going to be using a little bit thicker pencil so the first thing we're going to do is draw the lip of the flower pot and then you, the flower pot Lip has a second half circle that goes around it, so let's draw that. And then let's start drawing this table. So the table is a little bit above the horizon line, and this is a great opportunity for us to practice our perspective. So our center point is about here and the floorboards are all going to be pointing in that direction and so is the table so this is actually a straight line but because of your perspective it looks like it's going towards that point so it's going to have a little bit of a curve this edge of the table is a little bit farther away so it's going to have even more of a curve so when we go ahead and draw that in you're going to slant it a little bit to the left and then this side you're going to slant it to the right and then we're going to draw it across now if you're using a regular pencil you can draw across all the way I don't want to do that right now because I'm using the thicker pencil but with a regular pencil you can erase um, pretty easily so then we're going to draw the front of the table and then it's got a little bit of an edge. So let's give it that second line. And then we got the leg coming out here. Again, it's gonna have a little bit of slant. This side's gonna have even more of a slant. And there's the back leg. And then we have the line that connects the two pieces of the table together. So once we have our table established, let's go back to the flower pot. So we'll put the base down. Again, you're going to want them to curve in so we get that nice curved edge in the bottom. Okay, we have our flower pot. I'm going to make this even more defined over here. Okay. So once we have our base, let's start working on the actual bonsai. So the first thing I'm going to do is the trunk. So let's do this curly cue here. So it's almost like an S shape. And then let's do the other side of the trunk. What's wonderful about drawing nature is that every plant is different. So even though we're drawing the same bonsai, your bonsai is gonna look a little different than mine. And that's exactly the way that it should be because all bonsais are gonna be a little bit different even if they're the same same type so I'm going in and drawing this line right here 
And then, let's see, let's put some soil in the background here. Okay, and then I wanna draw these two main branches. So this one has like a straight point and then it comes up and does this Y effect. Now you notice as the branches get further away from the trunk, their thickness decreases. So we want it to be thick for the trunk and then gets thinner as it goes up. These are the two main branches so we want the initial connection to the trunk to be relatively thick. Let's give this a knob to keep it interesting. This one has a little bit of that S shape, and then again, we have these Y shapes. Okay, so we have our two main branches. This one even could go up a little bit further. Now I want to draw this branch next. It's got that nice curve. So let's go and make that C shape come back down and then it branches off literally in a couple of directions. And then it goes up higher, come back comes back down. So there's something like that. And then let's draw this shape over here. This one almost looks like a T to me. Now the people who grow bonsais, they spend decades, sometimes even hundreds of years, sometimes the bonsais get passed down through the generations. And the growers work all this time to train the branches to go in the direction and the shape and size that they like them to be. So this is your chance to train your bonsai's branches the way you would like them to be. So if you'd like them to be a little thicker or a little thinner or a little taller or a little shorter than what I have here, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Just did this branch right here, and then let's do this long one coming out that's pretty straight. Gave it a little bit of a curve on the edge. And then it comes around and it connects to this branch a little bit. So let's do that. Okay, so we have our bonsai outlined. So let's go, and I just want to erase some of this horizon line that I put in in the beginning. Okay, so once we have our sketch down, then let's go in and start adding some color. So the first thing I want to do is the flowers. So the flowers, you're going to take your yellow and you're going to
make it almost like pom-poms. And you want lots of lines going in lots of different directions. You want this to be very organic. You don't want it to be too much of a pattern for what we're doing here. I want this to be pretty free form and organic. Now you notice not every branch has flowers. It's only certain branches. That was how the witch hazel tree that I saw looked. But again, you can make this your own if you want all of the branches to have leaves. You can do that if you want the branches to have green leaves. You can try doing green. Okay, so we have some yellow down. So now let's take our red and start putting in the dots. So we do not want these colors to blend together. And the dots help redirect the eye so it doesn't feel so much like there's just yellow on top of the branches we drew. This helps give it some texture, some rhythm. And you can be as exact or inexact as you want. I'm trying to keep, again, with that organic movement of my dots. And I noticed the red was m mostly by the branches, so that's where I'm trying to keep. Okay, so we have our flowers. Now let's draw the branches. So for the tree, I'm gonna be using a dark brown. You can use a black if you want. You can use just your pencil. What I love about this tree is that it is mostly a gray trunk. So it's easy to recreate with our pencils. And you can see I'm using a dark brown, but it really looks like black. And because I'm not applying the color very hard, I'm trying to do our first base coat or the first layer of color, it's coming out gray. But that's what we want because I just want to introduce a darker color so when I go over it with another color then it'll really stand out. This line right here is almost black. So that line that we had sketched before that I want to press with the full weight of the pencil to get it nice and black. There's a little line coming around here so let me draw that one too. And then I'm gonna go back and give it a little bit more color. Let's take that regular pencil that we were working with before and go over the sketch to really blend in the colors because we don't want the white when you're painting, you apply colors and layers so that you can blend them. Or that's a common technique in painting. And we're using the same principle here. Because we want different colors, but we don't want to lose the different tones of the colors. Alright, so I started doing my tree, put in some extra lines because trees have a lot of texture, so we want some of that coming through. Okay, I have my trunk. So for the branches, I'm going to emphasize the bottom of the branches. 
I don't want to put color on the entire branch because I want to leave room for white. I do want some white peeking through in the branches because I remember there being white when I saw the witch hazel bonsai. So, especially as you go towards the top, because our light source is coming this way, so we want these branches at the top to be lighter. But we still want them to be defined. So by adding this little pop of color throughout, it's going to keep them defined without overpowering. The tree. Okay. There's our branches. We can go in and add more detail if you'd like. But I'm pretty happy with that. I just want to add a little bit of color here and here. Okay, so we have our bonsai. So now we gotta work on the base. So the first thing, let's finish out the moss and the soil in the pot. There was a lot of moss growing around this bonsai. So we'll use our dark green we don't want it to totally fill the pot. We just want to show that it's there. It's almost like a root. Now the soil had little white specks in it, which I believe is perlite or rocks that help fil filter the air so that it gets, it gets some, um, air moving through the soil. Since these plants live in these habitats or these pots for so long, we want to make sure that they're getting enough air that they can breathe. All right, so I added my light brown. Let's go back and the dark brown. Just to give it a little bit of contrast. We don't want it to be the whole thing. Then I wanted to go over the moss with dark brown, or actually the light brown. Help give it an earthy tone. So once we do that, let's start coloring in our flower pot. I'm doing the lip first. And then for the base, I don't want to put the full force of the color because we're gonna be blending here. And you also want the direction of your stroke to match that, that the lines that would naturally be there. So it would naturally be going across, so that's how we want our lines to be. You also have some crescent shapes in the pot. These are also curved. And when we're adding those in, we want to make sure that we keep that curved line. Now let's add that dark brown. I want to give it some shadow underneath. Again, don't put all the force down. This is just to blend the colors. So we'll give it a little bit of shadow. And then I want to emphasize these lines that I just drew in uh, that were part of the shape of the pot. So once we do that, let's take this light green and go over it 
And this will help blend the colors together so that they're not showing as much white that was in the background. I like using the lighter color on top. In this particular case, it gives it a little bit more of a turquoise color. And then take that dark green, go back over these lines. Give it a little bit more shadow. And there's your pot. Make the little lip a little bit bigger. And clean this up a bit. Okay, so we have our pot. The next step is the table. So we want the main color to be this light brown. So you can give it a medium push when you're drawing. You still want some white to be showing through because we're gonna put a couple more colors on. The table and the floorboards are a great place to practice your blending because the wood has so many colors in it naturally. And we really want to capture that in our drawing. Again, you want the lines to be going in the direction of the wood. And then let's do the edge of the table. And the legs. And the base. And the other leg. Okay, once we have the main color down. Let's add some dark brown. And this can start to fill in some of that white. I don't want to do all of it, all of the white, because I do want to go over this with a gold color because it helps neutralize some of that red and also brings in some of this yellow color that was in the flowers. The edge of the table is a little bit darker, so I'm going to give that a little bit extra brown. And same thing for underneath the table with the legs and the base. Alright, let's add this gold. If you don't have gold, you can use the yellow that you were using for the flowers. It'll help bring out that color palette. So you can see now in this final stage gold is really erasing that white that was still seeping through and blending the dark brown and the light brown. Okay, I'm almost done. Now before I go any further, I'd like to draw out the floorboards. As we were talking about in the beginning, the perspective of center point is about here. So we're going to want the lines on the floor to be going in that direction. This one is actually supposed to be, since it's close to the center, it should be straight. Let me fix that. It's a nice thing about sketching it with pencils is if something happens you can always fix it. 
And once you put the color in, it's very hard to erase. Okay, so that's pretty good. You're gonna adjust it however you like. So once we do that, we're gonna do a similar step to the table. We still want that light brown to be the main color. And then actually we want the I'm using an easel, so it's okay if my color goes off the page. If you're at home, just make sure that you're using a surface that you're okay with that. Or you can just draw an edge like I'm doing right now. The grain of the wood goes in many different directions, so it doesn't have to follow the line rule as much, although we do still want to be keeping that. The other advantage of doing a light base coat is this went over a little bit too much and I should be able to get most of it off because it's not too dark. Or I could always draw something there instead. Okay, so once we did that, then let's add a darker tone. So we have our dark brown. And we also want to emphasize these lines that I drew in earlier. Okay, inside, emphasize the lines. The dark brown is really about the wood grain. So Make sure that it's going in the direction that you want the wood grain to go. Okay, let's use that gold color. And this will help bring out the brown. Okay, and then finally let's take the brown and give it a last coat to really bring out that light brown color. It's almost like cherry wood. I'm gonna go across here so we can finish this up. Okay, we have our board. The last thing we're gonna want to do is draw a dark line to really bring out that this is the horizon line. It makes it seem further away. You can even 
give it a little bit more of a shadow back here. Really give it some depth. And I want to emphasize the table a bit more so it doesn't get lost in the horizon. Do the edges. Okay, and there you have it. This is our bonsai tree. Thank you for joining us in Library Drawing Live. We hope to see you in more Library Drawing Live sessions. And please check out the Mercer County Library System YouTube page and keep being creative.